Maine is one of the most forested states in the nation, and its woods provide a rich habitat for countless animals. Bryn Evans is a PhD candidate at the University of Maine who's been trying to better understand several native wildlife species. And she's doing it in an interesting way by using motion triggered cameras. 207's Beth McAvoy talked with her about what she's found. Nothing beats seeing an animal with your own eyes. What might be a strong second, though, is the more than 800,000 images of Maine wildlife Bryn Evans has captured over the last four years. Graduate school can be a lot of work. Wildlife research is very draining. You have to do something you love, like you have to genuinely love it. And I, we were driving up north, and I looked in the back seat, and I had just a bin of camera traps, which, like to anyone else, is just a hunk of plastic. And I'm like, it genuinely like fills me with joy just to have the blank camera traps there because I know I'm gonna put them out and then in a month I get to bring them back and I get to look at what those SD cards have and it's like Christmas morning every time. Evans has an array of 120 camera traps. She uses a small piece of beaver meat to lure animals in front of them. I started using them kind of as an ancillary tool for projects where we had radio collars on animals. So you're, you know, you understand where that animal is, what habitat it's using, whether it dies, what killed it, all this stuff. But you have to spend so much work to get that little bit of information about that one individual. And so camera traps started being used like, oh, well, let's see, you know, what predators are also in the area and just put out a few camera traps. And the amount of data you can collect for relatively low effort is phenomenal. She has 197 sites all over the state. She'll place three cameras at a time for anywhere from two weeks to a month, both in winter and in summer. So for something like this, where we really want that large scale and we want that long time frame, and ideally we want as many species as possible, there really isn't another approach to date that gives you that amount of flexibility that you can get with a trail camera Bonus also, they're less invasive, so we don't have to capture an animal, we don't have to handle it, we don't have to put it through that stress. Her work is in collaboration with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. They had some kind of questions about how camera traps might be used for long-term, large-scale, cost-effective monitoring um, for primarily Martin and Fisher, but the whole kind of group of medium-sized carnivore species that we have in Maine. There have been concerns, research coming out of the university, that the um, intensity and the magnitude of the timber harvest industry might be um, causing a decline in suitable habitat for those two species. And there's been research at a very local scale, really cool, actually using radio collars to follow individual animals and understand their survival. <clears throat> but at the whole the scale of the whole state, what's going on, what's like kind of the bigger picture. And so obviously with a single camera trap, you don't get as fine scale information about every individual you see, but you can track those trends over time. Tell me a little bit about over the last four years, what you found and what trends you're seeing with wildlife. Uh, one thing that I think is really interesting and is counterintuitive to what I was expecting to find, Martin and Fisher are um, similar in their diet in their use of habitat, but they're different in size. Fisher's much larger than Martin. So there are places around North America where they completely segregate. If there's Fisher present, there are not Martin present. Martin kind of finds a refugia where Fisher aren't gonna be active. Um, and that's sort of what I was anticipating finding here. And so far I have found the opposite. Fisher and Martin overlap in space, in time. I'll get them at the same camera, the same site, the same day. There doesn't seem to be like an avoidance pattern going on. Evan wonders if habitat in Maine plays a role in this overlap and also if the overlap is sustainable. She doesn't have answers yet, but the data she's collected has given her a jumping off point. Why is this work important? And also, are you seeing human impact on these species? If we start with the, the base assumption that we value our natural resources and we kind of want to, to share the planet with the other animals that exist here, um, I think it's very easy to explain why this, this work matters. If we don't share that assumption, then it would be more of a philosophical debate. But um, we do have an impact on these species. Um, our use of the landscape, our use of the animals directly, does have consequences for individuals and for populations over the long term. 
And every piece of information that we can collect and we can use to make informed decisions about pros and cons of our actions going forward, um, I think has a lot of value, both for the people that live in Maine, and this is our, you know, our heritage, this is something that is very valuable to us and globally, you know, managing these resources that we depend on in a way that is hopefully the least harmful to the most species. Um, a tool like camera traps that just helps you understand change over time, the consequences of um, management actions, new roads, things like that, definitely I think is important. She hopes her work will have a long future. But the hope is that um, my advisor is working a, a lot of crunching all the numbers and will be able to provide um, kind of a choose your adventure protocol to main IF and W. And then the goal would be for them to be able to take this as a foundation and start long-term monitoring. So ideally this project will live on long after I have finished um, my, my set of the work. Bryn Evans has worked closely on her research with her advisor and is on track to graduate in December of this year. She's in talks with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, hoping it'll continue the research for the next 25 years as it looks at the long-term trends of Maine's wildlife. And I just, I loved her line about how she can't wait to see what's, what she's captured when she finally sees the images for the first time after the cameras have been out there for weeks. It's great stuff. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting to, to pull out the camera and wonder what, what are you going to see, but she got some great images for sure. And, and, and maybe it's just me, but I think it would be a good name for a law firm, Martin and Fisher. <laughs> Can't there you just you like see the TV commercials? Oh, totally. We've been in Maine for centuries. <laughs> the law offices of Martin and Fisher. You're hired. <laughs>